Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's overview and lesson on using Logic Pro X 10.4's new studio horns. In this video you'll learn what this plugin does, how to use it and some ideas for bringing it into your own sessions. So with Logic Pro X 10.4 comes two brand new virtual instruments, studio horns and studio strings that according to Apple Notes have been deeply sampled meaning they are multi-samples of real instruments recorded in a studio and then created as a playable plugin. Now sample libraries are nothing new and there's a ton of outstanding third-party plugins offering incredibly realistic sounding strings and horn sections. So does Logic offer a high quality plugin or third rate dud? Well to be honest I'll leave that for you to decide. I think they're very good considering they are part of a free upgrade and they have some great features that will provide a huge palette for creative expression. So let's dive in and see what Studio Horns can do and check out how it sounds. So the first thing to note is that the Studio Horns are aimed at, well, studio session music. In other words, jazz, funk, pop and other styles of music that require a small horn section. Think Amy Winehouse's Valerie and you'll get an idea of the general style these horns and strings were created for. That aside, let's look at the plugin's interface. As you can see, the plugin is extremely clean looking and there aren't a great deal of dials and buttons. The idea behind the plugin is all the expression is either played in live with real time modulation and key switching, or expression is created by recording in your music and then editing articulations, etc., in the piano roll. As you can see, the plugin is split into two main sections. On the left, the graphic displays the selected single instrument you've selected or the section, which is selected by clicking on the menu button in the middle at the top. Here you can select your desired instrument or section. You can choose to play monophonically like the real thing or not, ideal for sketching out ideas. You can select whether the mod wheel is used for expression and there's a handy last played articulation field so you can keep track of the used articulations. On the right is the area where you can set up how the instrument will respond to MIDI input data. For example, I can adjust the attack and release along with the amount of auto vibrato, humanize and there's a volume control too. This means when I play a note, the note will play expressively based on my settings. Generally, for normal playing, you're going to leave attack and release at zero. Set auto vibrato to taste, along with humanize as well, which basically adds slight tuning and volume variations the more you dial in humanize. In a nutshell, that's it. But of course, there's much more to it than that. A trumpet player has lots of different ways of playing and changing the timbre and timing of a note and that's where articulations come in which you can find at the top of the plugin display. Here you'll find lots of different articulations that will enable you to sound just like a real trumpet player. Almost. Here's a short selection of some of the articulations. Okay, not bad, but of course a live player will constantly be changing from one articulation to another as they play, so we need a way of programming this and that's where Logic have added a great new feature called Articulation Sets. In the Track Inspector area in the Arrange page, Logic have added a new parameter called Articulation Set. When Studio Horns is loaded, Click on the Articulation Sets drop down menu from the Track Inspector and select the corresponding articulation set you have loaded in Studio Horns. The alternate way of doing this is by selecting a Studio Horns patch from the library, and Logic will automatically load the plugin along with the articulation set and some processing plugins too. 
This is a quicker way to get going, but might use processing plugins you don't want. So you might have to adapt and change things as you go. Whichever way you choose to do it, once you're ready to record, you'll have access to quickly switch from one articulation to the next. And here's how you do it. First, record a musical line. Next, open the piano roll and you'll see the articulation menu on the left hand side in the piano roll's inspector area. To change the articulation, all you do is select a note or group of notes and then select an articulation that you want to use. Now, when I play the musical line back, Logic will automatically switch between the articulations. So that's sounding pretty good, but I need to add a bit more color. And the way I'm going to do that is to do a pass with the mod wheel, having set the mod wheel to respond to dynamics via CC. But what if you want to add all this live whilst playing the keyboard? Well, you can do that by using the new key switching options. Again, this is nothing new, but for Logic is a great addition. So here's how you do it. When you have an articulation set loaded from the inspector area, the key switching is automatically loaded for the keyboard. If I bring up Logic's smart controls, you can see a key switch button has appeared. Click on this button and you can see which keys activate the different articulations while you're playing. They even update in real time as you hit the keys. Just make sure MIDI remote is switched on. Standard articulations such as sustain and staccato remain active until another key is pressed. Other less often used articulations such as falls are momentary and last as long as you have the key held down. This is great because you can add a fall following on from a sustain note on the fly without worrying about having to press the sustain key afterwards. The note will automatically switch back to the sustain key switch once you let go of the fall key. Now I can play in live all my articulations. The next thing to look at is the extended parameters area where you can set up even greater control. You can do all sorts of things from selecting different controller options to pitch bend and extending the key range. Each instrument is restricted to its own instrument range, meaning if you ever want a trumpet player to play your trumpet part, you'll always be within the instrument's pitch range. If however you want to have access to the entire keyboard, you can do that by ticking on the extended key range box. I also like the fact you can independently change the vibrato and dynamics channel controls. This allows you to independently adjust both elements of the instrument, giving far greater control over the live feel of the plugin. You could, for example, set the vibrato to MIDI channel 16 and leave the dynamic controller set to the mod wheel. Now I can independently change the level of vibrato separate to the dynamics level. Here's how it sounds controlling the plugin with different MIDI information. Finishing up looking at this plugin, we want to make it sound as real as possible. And of course, the instrument can't do that alone. It needs to be in some kind of realistically sounding space. And adding Logic's new reverb plugin, Chromaverb, would be a great addition to adding that extra touch of realism. Of course, the combination of other instruments and the chord voicings that you choose will also have a big impact on how real the horns sound. So let's hear them in a musical context 
with reverb and other instruments. Everything we have discussed here works pretty much the same way for studio strings. So grab a great vocalist and write some amazing sounding music using these high quality and great sounding new additions to the Logic plugin family. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about me and my site, masteringinlogic.com, please feel free to head over there and check out what we're all about. Until next time, happy mixing and mastering.